Hello, Gemini friends. I hope you are all doing well and fantastically and are living in a state of love and happiness. So, hi. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. And for those of you it's your first time here, welcome. I'm Denise. This is Surrender to the Flow Tarot. Today I'll be doing a general reading for the collective of Gemini. All the 11 placements, any of them will work. Um, it is, okay, my brain just went into it. It's a general reading, so it might not resonate with everyone. But I'm not sure how much that's relevant anymore because of this. I do monthly readings broken down into weeks. So week one, two, three, four, how each one starts and ends. And then I usually pull like an oracle oracle card or something at the end oh all these physical changes are happening right now because of your energy <laughs> so let this i don't know where it's going but i feel like i need to be strapped like solidly solid here not strapped in on my, well kind of but like feet planted i might need a different chair really i'm gonna have to try to make this one work okay <laughs> okay so I will be using tarot from the Key Tarot Love Deck, which is ridiculous. Like, it's got a real pretty box here, but wait till you see the inside of this box. What? That's a crystal. This is the, the creator made this so you can have an altar with you wherever you go. Wait till you see the art. You're going to. Oh, it's so great. I love this deck. And probably an oracle card from the Native Heart Healing Oracle. And when we get to this one, there's uh, meditations to do and they're wordy. So I've been holding them up so you can screenshot them. And I'll hold up the mandala that comes out too so you can screenshot that and then do them on your time. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I will have time stamps in the description box below week by week so that you can come back throughout the month and check on the weeks or however you want to do it. But just that's there so that it's a little more functional and easier quickly to access for all of you. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna, I'm going to pull how all the weeks start and then I'll pull how they end. There's a voice in my head saying, no, you might do start and end with this one. Which is the five of pentacles just slid out. In the reverse, actually. So, okay. Okay, Gemini. Take that. I'm going to start with week one and we'll figure out if we're doing starts or ends or start ends. Ready? Ace of Swords, okay, in your element, air sign, the path to enlightenment, the path to, the path to awakening of the enlightenment, enlightenment kind. It's different kinds of awakenings. The King of Swords, which is Aquarius or Gemini's. I, I read either I've heard either one. I consider it Aquarius and the Knight to be Gemini, but whatever you consider it, take that, okay? Air, though, strong for you guys so far, so. The Nine of Pentacles, the Mini Empress. Some of you might have Libra in your chart. Okay, this is exciting. That's so much truth and stability and power and groundedness clarity integrity let's see right genuine oh three of them what the three of cups the hermit and the ten of cups gemini what is going on you got love what is this this is like maybe the, oh, i don't know but there we go. And look what comes out. The King of Wands. All that air and then fire, fire, fire. King of Wands is Leo, but it could be any fire sign. Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. It doesn't have to be any of them. Gender also doesn't matter. So we'll see when we get there. <laughs> 
Okay, I think we're gonna do Howl's at End. We're gonna do Howl's at Start, Howl's at End. I wanna just look, the three of wands and the star on the bottom. Look at the art on these, right? Love this, okay. How's it end? How's week one end? This is in reverse. It is the world in reverse. Hmm. 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 It's still the same. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Okay. Week two. How's it? Oh, wow. The Knight of Wands which is Sagittarius. Okay, what's going on, Gemini? <laughs> How's week two ending? Oh my gosh, this is something else. Okay. The Wheel of Fortune in reverse. You have week one, the world in reverse. Week two, the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. Oh, wow, wait till I hold these up so you can see them. Okay. Ready? Week three. <laughs> How's it start? Are they gonna fall? Nope. Okay. The two of swords and the chariot. Cancer energy. Libra is who I think. I think the two of swords is Libra. Yeah. Okay, let's see what's going on these first two weeks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I know one thing. Pausing. There's pausing. The five of swords. Okay. So that's the first. That's that's self-deception. Usually. It can be. It can be like having to be in a... In an altercation or situation that's super annoying and someone else is pushing their bullshit on you. Like... I'll just give you a really quick example. I randomly, I know this dude through, I know this dude, right, through a, through a friend of mine. And um, this dude, I like worked with him once. I was a photographer back in the day and I shot his like landscape work. I barely know this dude. I, I didn't even remember that we had each other's phone numbers. I met him in like 2013 and I haven't seen him since then, okay? Well, that's not true. Um, like a year ago, I randomly saw him in my neighborhood and we were both like, hey, hey. And then like two nights later in the middle of the night, I got a fucking dick pic from him. And it was a full head from head down. It was a live photo, just nothing, just that. And I was like, that's disgusting. So I don't really see this dude, but I saw him last a uh, couple days ago. And he was like, oh, it's Denise. And I was like, I'm gonna keep walking. And he's like, what? So my point is I had to yell, you sent me a dick pic, dude. Like that was, that's a five, that can be a five sort of situation. You feel me? When like you have to defend yourself and it's super annoying and someone else is pushing their shit on you or it's you doing that to yourself, self-deception. It's more, I'd say it's, it, it falls more toward the self-deception side. It's more times than it doesn't, but we'll see what happens. Week three, how's it start? Hmm. A lot coming up on five of pentacles, six of wands. This is so interesting. Are you fighting yourself for, ha for your happiness? Are you terrified? Is it something like that? Hmm. <laughs> the Five of Swords. Wow. Visually. You saw that, right? Did you see it, like, go into the reverse? The Two of Wands. Okay. Every one of your How Your Weeks End are motion cards and they're all in reverse. All right, 
right, Gemini, let's see what's going on here. Week four, you got, this is, this is good. The three of swords in reverse. Yes. How's it ending? Sideways. The two of swords. This is bananas. It's going into the reverse. The moon, just cancer, Pisces energy on the split. The Hierophant, okay. I mean, Hierophant is Taurus. The moon is Cancer Pisces. None of these have to be any of this stuff. You got the Five of Pentacles on the bottom. That's the underlying of all of this. And the Six of Wands. <laughs> That's from the split, right? Page of Wands under that. Okay, so this is about things that are not on the surface, things that are hidden, things that have been kept below the surface for many different reasons. Some of it's intentional, some of it's subconsciously, some of it's out of your hands, divine, and you know, it's divinely kept from you. Um, some of it's deceptive, like it's gonna be different for all of you, so. But that's the underlying truth that connects everyone watching this reading is that there's something unknown. Um, and it has to do with your mind, not your brain, with your mind, which is what, your mind is the, the conductor for your energy waves that come in. Do you understand? That's a way, that's one of your senses, right? There's that sense is, is a way that you translate energies into thoughts or things you see with not these eyes. You feel me? So it's things to do with those. So that's where intuition falls under that. Um, there's definitely a, the whole entire reading, you are stuck, really, really stuck really, really, really stuck. But here's the good thing, right? You end week one with the world in reverse, but you end week four with the two of swords sideways. So it's going into the reverse, but there's sh it's showing that you're, there's, it looks like you're getting, there's hope, right? Like you, you there's something that is giving you hope. Like, look at this card. She's going towards something, right? It, but there's definitely a feeling of mistrust and like not sure about this, insecurity about it, but you're going to make some kind of decision. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see how this works out, but oh, okay. I might take a picture of this one afterward and use this as the cover but I don't know. I feel like you guys should see it and I'm not gonna be able to do it if I hold it up, but I will show you this. I'll show you how all the weeks start and then I'll show you how they all end, but I can't do it all at once because <laughs> I just can't hold it. Okay. It's like, was started out this way and then this guy came and then you go to this, which is like a mix of all of it, right? Okay. There's not a lot of, you're not feeling very stable or grounded at all right now. You're not feeling rooted. It looks very much like you feel almost out of control of the way you're responding and reacting in general. Like you are just in shapeshifter mode. You're not even in shapeshifter mode. You're in like, I don't know what the word would be. You're kind of, it's like you've, 
you've given up to the tide of whatever the force is that's moving you. Like you've, you've, you've been so battered right now that you've given up your power. You don't recognize you're doing it because whatever's going on from externally is so hitting you so deeply. It feels very much like it's just that. And it might be just that, like when you just find something out, some of you might be coming to this, you just found something earth shattering out. So that is going to be, you know, so, so look at the situation and apply it to yourself, right? On if, you know, if you just find something earth shattering out, you're going to kind of give up your control kind of, but you still have, um, you always maintain the ability to, to, to stay in control. Everything we do is a reaction or a response. And we only want reactions, really, but they are also responses. But responses come from alignment and reactions come from whatever is the thing, the energy that's fueling you at the moment. So when it's a, 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 a dangerous situation like that, like a, what's the word, extreme, whatever, you, you want to react and respond quickly. You know what I mean? But otherwise reaction is not really what you want to do. You want to respond. That's the knowing and being and is aring all in one. Okay. It's literally all wands and swords. And then the world and then the wheel <laughs> over here of what came out. You're really holding on to something tightly. There is someone. It's something or someone. It's going to be different for all of you. It's either an actual person, the idea of the person, or your idea of a future person. Some of this is going to be you too. I'm not sure. I, I'm feeling out the King of Wands and the Knight of Wands, and I... I'm not sure that they're the same energy. I'm not positive. I feel like they're separate. I'm not positive, And I'm also not sure if they're you or not you. But I kind of feel like... Well, this King of Wands is, is definitely directing the entire reading. But I'm not... I don't have a strong... I don't know strongly one way or the other yet what it is, but I can feel things in here. So we're just going to get into it. Ready? Week one. The King of Wands you start out with and you end in the world in reverse. We're just getting right into it. Okay. Okay. Are we using this deck? Hmm. in that one. I don't think it's this one. Hold on. Oh, okay. I think it's this one. Also, I want to try the Aquarian. That just, I heard that one too. So this happens because it's not always, it's not, it's rarely super crystal clear what the guidance, like, it, you know, I, I just know what it feels like when they're trying to tell me something, but it's not always clear what that is. Just 
just don't know that it should be the black tarot, but okay, it is. It's the black tarot. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful deck. All right, let's see what's going on here. Let's start with actually the world in reverse. Why is the world in reverse for Gemini? And then we'll go to the King of Wands. Your week starts out with someone embodying the energy of very strong, assured, charismatic, you're a lot of attraction to them. You, there's a lot of, they're magnetically attracted. You find them or you are, if it's you, I don't think this is you. I don't think this is you. It's someone you feel is broken. You feel he, they're broken. I want you to just examine broken too, right? Do you know what I mean? But, um, and also examine your reaction to it. Like you want to fix him. Check it. If you want to help him, see if fix actually works. You don't want to fix anyone and you don't want to help people. You, you do, you want to support them, but they need to be supporting themselves. You understand? This King of Wands is in the upright. But I, but I get a, a confused feeling about this King of Wands. There's like a, there's some, there's sad there for sure, but there's strength there, but it seems like maybe the strong, even side of them is newly developed. You know what I mean? Like they're newly developing it. I would love to know in the comments how any of this is resonating with you. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. The world. Why is the world... Why is the world in reverse or what do we have to do to get the world in upright? What do we have, to, what does Joe and I have to do to get the world in the upright? That'll answer both probably. The Knight of Wands, I knew that was gonna, in reverse and how we to start, two starts is the Knight of Wands in the upright. Okay, so this is a pulling back. This is a pulling back of you, of your of your energy, of this energy. That there's some really strong energy compelling you toward, like a tr com literally pulling you toward it. But there's something about it for you that you know that you shouldn't go there. Not that you shouldn't go there, but that you need to be discerning in how you're in how much energy you share with anyone external from you and that they need to earn it they need to earn it you don't just give it they need to earn it you need to because you are very special gemini who who is watching these and you are healers gemini's who are watching these and people are, will drain you and have been draining you for your light and your warmth, okay? So this world, how to get it in the upright is to chill on the, on the movement, is to take a, is to align yourself, not like be in your head about it and looking, no. Detach yourself. Be a witness to it. Bear witness to it and continue to just fuel your energetic reserve. Does that make sense? Measure your movements. But in week two, it's in the upright. So what else can Gemini do? It's telling me to look on the middle. The nine of pentacles, which popped up earlier, the mini empress. So you may have Libra or you might be have Virgo in your chart. And the queen of cups. That's cancer, it could be any water sign, it doesn't matter. The, the king of wands is underneath, okay. So yeah, so it looks like this person is 
you're in a partnership. It's probably romantic, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. But you are equals, but not in the same element. Do you understand? They're the king of wands showing, and you're showing up as the queen of cups. So they're just about broadcasting, broadcasting, broadcasting and taking what they need, but not when they're in the king of wands and they're upright, they should be able to, to use resources, right? Not, not, not take them per, you know what I mean? Selfishly, but I'm getting a feeling of this, but you are in the open receiving open place, the most open, inclusive place. So just look at the difference dichotomy. I don't know if that's the right word between those. You're not both the king and the queen of wands or the queen and the king of cups. This is all fire, passion, desire, um, power, and power, beauty, both beauty, but love, love, warmth, safety, healing, okay? Who the the key to that is to keep yourself in the nine of pentacles all the time. That Put that in your head as like, your, that's your baseline, which is a person who is, has their knowing and their being and their is slash aring all in alignment, right? All of those things are in alignment. And then the desire part of the creativity of the wands and all of that, that's they use as a source. Do you understand what I'm saying? Take the like confident parts of that. You're confident, you're secure in yourself. You are secure in yourself. You believe in yourself. You believe that you're dope. You might be at the very beginning of believing that you're dope. You might be in the middle or you might be at the pinnacle where you know you're dope. You're not, it's still not a new concept to you. You know what I mean? So just apply that to where you are here. What the hell was I saying? Oh, the nine of pentacles is, is very grounded and very open and in the flow. Generous sees the divinity in everyone, but recognizes it in themselves first, keeps that energetic reserve full and preserved. So they have overflow to share. They are very good at being resourceful in all ways. Pentacles are about currency. It's not just money. It's time and energy. It's anything that fits into currency. You feel me? The nine of pentacles is fully okay. Fully at peace with being alone or with someone. But they are not afraid to lose someone, no matter who it is. Do you understand? Because they always maintain them, their connection with their themselves, with the source, and themselves with the source. You feel me? So they know that whatever happens is meant to happen, and they they just go with it. They there's trust and faith in the universe and in yourself. That's the part to just keep working on. That always do. It's never ends. You know. There's just different levels and then there's different things. You don't need to all check for your healing because sometimes you can get stuck in the healing mode because you're so used to it and maybe you haven't propelled yourself far enough out that you don't realize this healing thing you already did, it's actually now holding you back because you don't need to put any more energy on that. You know you're at a place where you're not going to make the same choices you did before. You can let that go because it's solid in you and move on. You feel me? So just apply all of that. Okay, so I don't need, I don't, well, yeah, it's, tell me one more. One more for how you can get the world upright. Let me just shuffle these around for a second. Oh, yep, well, nope. <laughs> all right, one more for the world, how you can get the world in the upright. the two of swords which is how week four ends with it sideways right so mm, aligning your knowing and your being the two of swords comes in when there's something external happening and we are putting the amount of energy of thinking of of actual analyzing and trying to figure something out we're using that part of us the our knowing is out of whack it's becoming not knowing it's becoming thinking 
it's not here anymore in connection with your being, with your heart. That's, that's what you need to do. That's what to get this world, this cycle. So the world is a cycle that you have, that is done. It's done, but you're not letting it be done. You're not letting it be done. You're struggling. I, maybe that's frustrating because you feel like you're not, but you, you are. So you just have to figure out where that is in there. And here's the thing. If you're like, oh my God, I'm, I can't think anymore. I don't want you to think. Just if that's where you are, what I want you to do and the universe wants you to do is the nine of pentacles. Meditate, get enough sleep, check what you're eating, what your surroundings are like. Do that and the answer will come to you. You understand? Okay. What are we going to ask about this King of Wands? I know what we're going to ask. What are the King of Wands? No. How is the King of Wands showing up for Gemini in this first week? The Three of Pentacles. It's definitely someone you're co, co collaborating with. There's some kind of common thing that you're working on together, or you meet through that something that you have in common, or that both what both of you do would both get you both to like you have a common goal in mind, but you bring different parts. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's something like that. Whoever it is is tied into your legacy and your and your longevity. Okay your ancestral, like your generational wealth, you're tied into each other's. The world. It's done. Showing up as however you knew them and whatever this was, is done. It's not, it's straight done. I'm sorry, Gemini. Hold on. The sun, which is also Leo, which is someone standing in their authentic self. And the high priestess. Okay. <laughs> it's all major arcana, first of all. Strong Leo. Doesn't have to be though. I'm getting a couple things. Whatever this was is done. Whoever you knew them as, that's done. It's this whole thing, and I'm not sure who because I think it's for both of you, but I think it's different levels. This is showing up for it. Is guided by your intuition and the divine strong. This is like, this is more, how do I explain this? So situations happen to us and they're all different breakdowns of how much actual human stuff, 3D stuff we have to put into it and how much of it is divine. This is so divine. This is strongly, strongly divinely guided here. You feel me? And so it is to your benefit to not resist this. That's what's, ha what's happening right now. Because if you keep resisting it, it's going to go way into the terrible negative. Because You feel me? Because it's very strong what's happening right now. So this world could either be you are seeing this as done. You are clear. Your intuition has led you to this point and you are embodying the sun energy and you are standing as your most authentic self, Right? Your, your ideal authentic self you you are you have you're committed to it and you've embodied it you might be on the scale at the beginning middle or end of that but it doesn't matter that's where you are right or they have I don't know about that I don't what I feel like is that they're aware now of whatever facade they had been showing or whatever 
delusion, whatever that is, they're aware now. They, they can't hide it anymore, who they are, right? And they're aware that you see them that way. I don't know for sure. The magician is underneath the sun. Magician is Aries and the two of cups is under the high priestess. The emperor, oh my God, Gemini. The emperor is under the, oh my God. <laughs> the four of swords is under the magician, okay. Whoever has taken time and self-care and, and dedicated themselves to their self-care and has grown from that, that is who is in the sun in the high priestess energy. So I don't know who that is, but you do. And I would love for you to tell me in the comments because it would be so helpful for me in future readings. Try to figure out more specific, how to get this more specific, you know? That's, so whoever embodies that energy is, has been working on this, has literally manifested it, literally manifested it, put all their attention and desire to and an intention toward getting yourself to your fullest self, being who you are, living the life you know. I think you think of that you want, but it's not a want, it's a need. Do you look at these things, the things that you over the years that are positive, that you don't, that stay with you, you might give up on them because you're afraid, but they're positive. Those are probably not wants, they might be needs. You know what I mean? So just look into that, but. You have been manifesting your ideal happiness. And it's, you've been, you're listening to your intuition Okay, here's a whole other way this could show up. This person who is the King of Wands is showing up also as this, okay? And you are like, yo, what? Hold up, hold up. You are propelled forward to just dive back in, but there's something about it that you're like, mm, there's, still, there's still something off in, in you, right? Well, that's why you're at the Two of Swords. There's a decision to be made here. Why is the world in the reverse? Why is the world in the reverse? Wow, that's a lot of cards, a lot of cards, okay but they all came out, so. The Judgment, the Ten of Wands. Ooh, okay. So that's a calling that was being made and not heeded. There's burdens that you have been carrying that you don't need to, and you're putting them on yourself, but you're not fully recognizing that yet. You're still not recognizing your, your own contributions to your um, dissonance and your unhappy state. You know what I mean? You are, but there's still there's still room that you haven't looked at yet. Oh, they're all in reverse. Okay. This guy's on the bottom, so we're doing this way. The Ace of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles, the Three of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles. Look at all the pentacles here. This is all about not being present, not being rooted, not being looking, not making real the lessons, the reality of what was in front of you, of what hurt you. It's being swept up, letting yourself be swept up and swept away and kidding yourself about that that's giving, you're, you're not being completely honest about giving up your power there. You, you might, there's something there's a need you have underneath, but it's really a want. It's a desire. It feels like for attention, a val validation, love to be seen. You're not, you know, I feel like that is what's going on. And I'm not sure that this person sees you yet, but whatever it is from the universe, the universe is saying, you got to hold up. 
you got to reground yourself. You got to remember the reality. There's no potential. There's reality. What is, right? Keep yourself grounded. Honor your boundaries. Figure out what they are and be them and do them before you can even show up to be in a partnership of any sort. You have to just maintain them, you know, so that you can hold this new thing. If, you're, if your leg is broken, how long can you like walk on it? How could you, you might be able to carry like a gallon of milk with a broken leg, but for how long? Do you understand what I'm saying? There's your foundation of yourself, your core root chakra, root chakra, sacral chakra openings and meditations, okay? Um, that needs to be, that needs to be worked on. It needs to be rejuvenate no it's not the right rebuilt rebuilt okay so you're gonna have in this first week a lot of excitement and a lot of whirlwind and the most important thing for you is to stay grounded as possible stick to your schedules your self-care don't be bending all over for this new person or whatever this new situation is look at it for the reality and bear witness to it don't let yourself get swept up, even if it's positive. Maintain your center, okay? I feel like whoever you are coming to this, you're 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 new to that still. You have figured out these things about yourself and you've been doing them, but you're still like a sapling, okay? So to revere that, that's sacred. Be even more discerning about who you're letting contribute to the growth of you. You know what I mean? <sighs> Whew, okay. Wow, week two, 41 minutes in. It's okay. Okay, so week two starts with the Knight of Wands in the upright and the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. So we still have a delay going on here. Is it being divinely stopped or is it being stopped by you? Let's let's see, right? I don't, I'm like, I don't wanna use the black cards for this. I, I'm not going to, I'm using these. I'm using the key love. Okay. Oh God, am I not? I'm using the Aquarian. Okay, whatever. I love this deck. It's a good deck. Okay. Hmm. Let's start with the, why is the Wheel of Fortune in reverse? It's just where we're going, okay? Why is the Wheel of Fortune in reverse? I'm not ignoring you, Knight of Wands. I'm not sure what to ask about you. Hold on. so interesting. I just realized this. Look at what this knight is holding the wand, but look at the swords. And he's facing them. It's interesting, right? How is the Knight of Wands, we're gonna go there. How's the Knight of Wands energy showing up for Gemini in Gemini's sphere? I don't wanna ask how to keep it in the upright because sometimes the Knight of Wands is one foot in, one foot out. So I wanna establish first what, how it's showing up and then we can figure it out from there. You know what I mean? How is the Knight of Wands energy showing up for Gemini? Oh, here's no surprise to you. It's showing up as the Emperor whoever this is in your life, Aries, Leos, whatever. It doesn't even have to be any of it, but it's very strong fire. So showing up as temperance on the split and strength on the bottom, which is another Leo card. And temperance is Sagittarius and the Knight of Wands is Sagittarius. I mean, geez Louise, okay? This is so strong in fire. This is insane. So this is highly creative. Whatever this is, 
the potential for you're both highly creative and it's like a volcano together. You're like, you're, all your wild sides of both of you are so activated in this. And that's what I think the universe is saying. Like, yo, I know you're feeling it a lot. You gotta chill though. You gotta chill, meaning keep yourself tempered. Use faith as a compass. Don't try to make things work. Don't try to, don't, don't watch and see if you're, how you're manipulating it. Are you using seduction as a tool? Are you, you know what I mean? How are you trying to make this outcome happen? How are you trying to keep something? No. The, what you want to keep is you and your relationship with source. Always, always, and first. I promise you, you the stronger you get at that, the stronger you are, and the easier all this other stuff will be to handle. That you all of the right things will happen for you. This the more you do that to yourself. Okay, for yourself. Definitely whatever this is, 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 it's trying for both of you. I think it's challenging. You're being tempted, the lovers and the three of rods. Yeah, under, yeah. You are being, there's a very strong temptation here, but the universe is wanting you to stay, to take now in week two, take movement, right? but stay grounded during it. Don't move if you're not grounded first and be open with whoever this is about where you are. Not ultimatums and stuff, where you are. No, this doesn't work for me yet. I need a little, I need more time. I need to, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Gemini, I wish I could explain this feeling in my heart. It's very exciting, but it's also a little bit terrifying. There's like a little bit of terror catch those. What if this doesn't last? What if they're, you would just stay present in the moment and take care of you and you'll know if it's right. It will feel right or wrong. You feel me? You will know it here, not just in your, as like your head up here, heady. You'd want to watch that because that means your, your feet aren't grounded. Your, your sacral, your root isn't grounded. Your root chakra, you feel me? Okay, what can Gemini do to get the Wheel of Fortune into the upright? <laughs> the Three of Cups, interesting. Interesting, being open to joining forces in a celebration, coming together to, in, in happiness, like to celebrate something. Both in the reverse, the Ace of Cups and the Queen of Cups. For what you can do to get the Wheel of Fortune into the upright. Hmm. It really is. It's about taking a step back and being mindful and grounded. You have the Ace of Cups and the Queen of Cups. That's the beginning and the pinnacle, right? So you have, you're powerful. This can equally work as equally as it won't. And it, and it will be, if it works, it's gonna be amazing. And if it doesn't, it's gonna be equally hideous. Cause that's the type of, that's the power of energy that you're working. With. And when I say if it doesn't, I mean if you have given up power of yourself, if you are not present, if it falls apart, if it doesn't work out and you stay in your power, it's not going to be the worst ever. It's going to be okay. You're going to be just fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if you don't re if you don't keep your energetic reserve full and preserved and you're not and you don't have overflow and you're giving from this, or it's like, yeah, if any of it's being drained or you're not, it's going to be terrible right? It's going to feel terrible. Terrible. Let me see what's on the split and on the bottom. The six of wands and the Jesus Christ, the knight of wands. They're looking at each other.
Okay. Enjoy it. Let yourself enjoy it. And by doing that, you stay present. You stay measured. You can have these big moments in this chemistry and you can get, you can get lost with the, with, you know, you can metaphorically get lost, but don't think of it that way. Think about engaging with the energy, exploring the energy, not getting lost in it, not getting taken away by it, but, but both of you being present in it and looking at what you're making together. Do you feel me? Instead of being like, oh, and then like, oh, they're so, no, you're both so, and you're both here. So work together. This is a weird message kind of, but I think it's making sense. Okay. All right. Week three. You start with the five of swords and you end with the two of wands in the reverse. So again, that's the two of wands is motion. It's when a decision is made, there's things happening around you and, and it's time for a change and you're either going to go forward and expand yourself or just stay right where you are. Now there's sometimes where that can be like in your best interest to just stay where you are. But because the five of swords is showing up, well, it could go either way. It's either you resisting it, resisting the growth, or it's because you recognize that you're still kind of self-deceiving, like you're self-sabotaging yourself, so you pull yourself back. It could be either one. So let's see, what are we gonna say? Hoo, hoo, hoo. How is the Five of Swords showing up for Gemini? What's that energy showing up like? How's it manifesting? The Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so slow, slow. What else? Slow, steady, but it can be stagnant. The Strength card again. The Knight of Pentacles is Virgo. The Strength again is Leo. One more. So this is someone, this is you holding your, this is you doing all the things I said. This is you doing it. Catching the triggers, then immediately going inside of yourself with whatever you do to remind yourself of your truth. And then you're moving from that. Gemini. That's beautiful. One more. Justice, the Libra card. Your heir sister, your heir sibling. The lovers, that's you, by the way. This is beautiful. This, my immediate feeling when I saw this was you are breaking ancestral patterns. You are breaking them. This is the justice is being for all of your ancestors is happening now with you. Gemini. This is amazing. Oh my God, that's so, that's amazing. The Six of Swords, yep. Separating yourself for the sake of healing, understanding. It doesn't have to be permanent, but it needs to happen now. And in order for you to become your best self, you have to remove yourself and your energy and your attention from something and put it onto you. And you're doing that, the Knight of Cups. So you can come and be open and receiving and be in love with someone in a partnership. Gemini, this is turning out awesome. I'm so glad because it's very heavy, right? Okay, what can Gemini do? What needs to happen for Gemini to have the two of wands in the upright? What needs to happen for the two of wands to go into the upright? The page, the page of uh, wands. Okay. Okay. That's just, so that is something that you're drawn to and you feel excited about that you have, it pulls on you and it, and it adds to your uplift. You feel me? The four of swords, that's, that's healing, um, separating, but not isolating, but retreating, 
You know, that's all of your hierarchical needs, like we already talked about, your sleep and what you're eating and your movement and your metal, mental health. Like, what are you doing for that? I was going to say meditation and mental, and it came out as metal. <laughs> okay. What else needs to happen for the two of, for Gemini, for the two of wands to go into the upright? So it has to be something that you are fully vibing with. You, the lovers. It has to be you showing up. You showing up as your most authentic self. Look at all the burping coming through. That's what happens during channeling. Um, and your partner. And your partner has a solid relationship with the source and with themselves. And they've maintained it. And so do you. And you come together and make something new. You have to be sure. That's what that's what I think needs to happen for you to take movement. The five of cups came flying out. That's self-medicating card. Let's see what else came out with that. Oh, wow. Two other ones came out. The eight of cups and the king of swords. <sighs> yeah, it has to be rooted in the truth not moving from a trauma bond or a wound or an open wound, being tr transparent, full of integrity, being able to trust either you or the person that you're with. You understand, you know what I mean? Recognizing, so the five of cups is coming up as a trigger warning for you. Like when, so for you, when something makes, when you're in a situation and you feel poor me about yourself or, everyone wins but me or I'll never get love I'm just I just pick bad people I'm not meant for it I guess any of those things no you're manifesting that you're manifesting it when you say those things and you give energy to it that's what you're manifesting when you feel that way that's the trigger for you that it's not true if someone else makes you feel that way that's your trigger to your red warning sign of whoop where your, your energy should immediately come back to you and you should look as an observer, detached observer, because something is going on. And then you decide, is it me bringing up this fear or is it them putting something onto me that's not okay? And this is saying you have the strength to walk away from what's not emotionally fulfilling for you and that doesn't actively contribute to your heart space. And you have the strength in the King of Swords, which is you, if you know, again, Gemini or Aquarius, but however you take it, it's you in this reading, it's you. Um, as, as a person, no hesitation in cutting things out and people out that don't work for you. Gemini, <laughs> you killing it, okay? The Wheel of Fortune, yay! And the Upright and the Hierophant, yep. You're going to get on the wheel and let it go and you're going to fulfill these soul contracts and you're going to get karmic justice for all your ancestors and you're going to break ancestral patterns and all of that. Let's go to week four. Wow. This reading is wild. I didn't, I didn't see it. It's wild, but it's wonderful. It's a wonderful reading, Gemini. It really is. Okay, so you start with the three of swords in reverse, which is a good thing. That means you're not letting the hurt and the pain be what dictates your movements. You're, you're recognizing that some wounds, some pain will, some pain doesn't leave. And at once before you're contained, this is the pain and this is you. It was like this. And then it's slowly morphed and it stayed the same, but you're getting bigger. You feel me? You're recognizing that and you're letting yourself have a chance. Still though, this Two of Swords is in. So um, let's see why the Two of Swords is sideways. What needs to happen for the Two of Swords to be in the upright for Gemini? The Six of Swords. So that means adequate detachment, like detaching yourself putting your focus really on you and the care and keeping of you, making the changes you need um, to keep your energetic reserve full. It's literally 
refilling it, looking at your energetic reserve and filling it. And, and sticking to your boundaries. It's sticking to your boundaries. The seven of cups sideways. Hmm. Right now, maybe you feel, hold on, I'm gonna pull another one. These are both in the reverse and they are the Ace of Wands and the Six of Pentacles. Okay, give me a moment here. The Wheel of Fortune on the split again and the Five of Wands on the bottom. It's insane, all the air and fire energy in here. With some love, with some love. But I do, I wanna point out that your person is showing up as an emperor and that's good because the emperor is all four kings. But it isn't showing up with any with any cups. It's showing up, you require a, a lover who is your equal. But I just wanna point that out, that the cups are coming from your side, not theirs. Doesn't mean there's not, but I'm saying that's significant and figure out how that resonates and how that relates to you. Like how does, what it, what's the translation for you? How does that directly apply to you in your situation? If you wanna share in the comments, I would love it. Don't worry about it. Even if you just say, yo, that was really helpful. That also helps me. Okay. So for the two of swords to get into the upright, you have the seven of cups sideways going into the reverse. So that's about being clear about your choices. And the seven of cups is ultimately to choose the things and the choice that brings you to your highest authentic self. And so that's something you're still figuring out. You're still figuring out. You're st so what it is, is you will do this as soon as you're ready. That's what I think. There's a little bit of dissonance here where maybe it feels slightly like you're not equals or you're there, you might be having, there's insecurity here somewhere. I don't know on whose side, but you, there is a feeling of you're on the same team. You're working toward the same goal, but you're not totally sure yet about whether this person or situation is your equal, is has earned your, all, all, your energy. How much of your energy have they earned? You're still figuring that out. That's good. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. If they don't simultane, if you don't simultaneously uplift each other continually, then that's something to look out for. You want to look at why, why that's a, that's a misalignment. You feel me? Wow. Whew, Gemini. This is so much. This is a lot, a lot, but it's wonderful. The tower is underneath the wheel of fortune. Yeah. I think everything falling away is all of your, your old ways, your old ways reactions instead of responses. All of those things, I think, are falling away. Anything that's not contributing to the foundation of your energetic reserve and the growing of it, um, it's falling out. Of, it's falling out. So let's do a last. Native heart, yes. Yes, strongly for you, for you guys. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I feel like I need like a vacation kind of like I would love to be like on a boat and I don't even go on boats like a pet like a canoe or something where I'm just like chilling and like smooth that's how I'm feeling right now so maybe that'd be helpful for you guys too with the four of swords and the six of swords things that are serene bring you serenity and feel serene give an environment of serenity okay one last piece of advice for Gemini for the month of April. All right, I'm going to, these are newer, so sometimes they stick together, and this, the way those shuffled, I'm going to break it up so we have, oh, I guess it's just how it wants to be. Okay, one more. Okay. More than one. Third eye chakra and dream shield. Okay. So here they both are. And you may want to screenshot these to use for the meditation that's coming up.
It's about mastery of yourself. We'll start with Dream Shield, number eight. Pay attention to your dreams. Let your mind drift to a solution. Easy conversation. So that could be like why the four and the six of swords are coming up for you and not the hermit because the four and the six of swords are more your hierarchical needs and so they are sleeping. And if you are a person who gets a lot of downloads in your dream state and your sleep is disrupted, do you feel me? That's like, so the thinking in the daytime isn't gonna help that if you're a person who, who gets epiphanies from downloads when you're in a subconscious, unconscious mind state, you know, you know, a hypnagogic state, you feel me? Thinking it, and using your brain is gonna hurt you. You just need to be in the knowing. And if you don't know, recognize that there's a reason, there's still something to be uncovered and just put that attention directly back into you. What, okay, right now, what about me can I take care of? And do that thing and then do the next thing. You feel me? The medicine of this mandala is now at your side. The symbolism of the dream shield existed amongst many ancient Native American tribes. A dream shield was not used in battle, but to decipher the dream state and the unconscious mind. It can therefore help you to achieve your dreams. The Native Americans would share the experiences and visualizations from their dreams with the medicine man of their tribe and a dream shield would be created. Maybe you're to make a dream shield. That's so cool. To represent your soul's evolution and path. In many instances, this would be depicted through a medicine wheel on the shield. The wheel kept coming up too, right? However, these are connecting for you, if they are. This mandala speaks of awareness and illumination, the medicine of eagle and the east. It brings forth a higher perspective and a deepening connection with the great spirit world. The geometry, geometry within the center of this mandala outlines the many sacred roads we take through the medicine wheel to return to our universal self. Be aware of the messages within your dreams and raise your awareness of the impact they have on your waking world. That's the knowing. If you keep the knowing, then it'll come in. That subconscious that comes through that you held onto has space to come in. Do you feel me? Let me know if that was helpful. Do not allow yourself to be caught up in, too close to, or too entwined with the coming and goings of life. Instead, this card is asking you to soar as the eagle to a higher vantage point where you can see your life's path and the paths within the world around you. This is so on point for your reading. You are the warrior taking your own journey upon the red road, not a warrior of battle, but a champion of your dreams and the creator of your world. Yes, Gemini, that is what you are, okay? That is what you all are. Now you know it. Now you just learn how to maintain it in this human form. And you know, you got this. So on this day and moving forward, wear your dreams, those achieved and those awaiting fruition with humility to inspire you to become the great big hearted warrior of your own journey upon the red road home. Here's the meditation. I'm just gonna hold it up so you can screenshot it. Okay, and now we'll do the third eye chakra. Whew! Oh, I just got menopause. Yeah, hot flashes. No. I'd rather have these than my menstrual cycle. Because that was hell, so just saying. But they're not any, they're not fun. Okay. Heightened awareness, shattering illusions, clarity. Inner tuition. Within this new world, your pure instinctual self is calling to be heard as the way shower of light. With this mandala, you are receiving indigo and silver rays via the window of your mind. A gateway to deeper insight is further opening you to your inner world and the dimensions within the higher realms. It's all connected to your dreams. So cool, right? How this whole came together. 
The beautiful moon sits at the center of this chakra as a representation of the divine feminine overseeing this great blossoming earth. Think of the nine of pentacles, the empress, the queen of pentacles, you feel me? The open lotus flower within this card reflects your inner lotus flower. It is now opening to receive divine guidance, follow your intuition. A gentle yet influential, influential energy of the highest order. Sorry, reminds you of the power of insight. I just remembered that the moon had come out, right? Didn't it? Yeah, somewhere. The moon was on the split at some point for you. And how it could have been the dream state that was what it was saying. The hidden, not revealed, could have been re referring to dreams. It's interesting to think about. Allow this energy to be your guide. Be open to your innate abilities. Birth the gift of vision and thus become a seer of your life. This mandala indicates you have the ability to share your gift with others as a conduit for channeling. You are ready, should you choose. The third eye chakra represents the divine garden within your mind's eye. It is full of flowers in bloom, indicating that you have not only surpassed the illusionary world, but you have chosen to be responsible for creating a new one. Start by accessing this inner garden and harvesting wisdom from the precious flowers that have grown out of experience and lessons learned, right? You're a sapling, right? You can choose to see the world through the window of your mind's eye. This outlook is divinely connected with all that is and speaks directly to one's heart. Here is the meditation. All right, Gemini. I hope that this helped. Thank you for coming and sharing your energy with me. And thank you for holding space for me so that I could attempt to translate the messages coming through to you. I'll see you guys in like two weeks at the mid-monthly reading. I cannot wait to see where you are then. Best of love and travels and light to you. Till then, bye-bye, Gemini.